Hi folks, Demi Fortuna of Atlantic Water Gardens here today to talk about our Let's Talk Pumps Trifold. When designing your water feature, one of the most important decisions to make is the size and type of the pump you're going to use. Our Let's Talk Pumps Trifold gives you a handy guide to deciding exactly what flow you need, the total dynamic head or work the pump has to do, the type of pump to use, and which particular pump will give you the best flow for the least wattage. The trifold starts with your decision on the type of flow that you would like to see for your water feature, whether you'd like a trickle, a waterfall, or Niagara. By choosing this particular flow, we can easily quantify the amount of water per inch of waterfall width that you're going to want to have. Once you've figured out the width of the waterfall and the flow that it's going to take to get that effect over that waterfall, we can then talk about the total dynamic head or the amount of work your pump is going to have to do delivering the water to that waterfall. First, you'll log your waterfall width in feet at the top of the chart. Next, you'll put the flow per foot that you'll need for the effect that you'd like to achieve. After figuring the total flow of your waterfall, the next step will be to figure out the size tubing that you're going to need to get that flow to the top of the waterfall. And you'll be able to do that with the handy chart on the center of the pump trifold. All you'll do is pick the flow that you've determined for your waterfall width. Let's take 3,000 gallons an hour as an example. Run your finger across to the squares that are colored dark blue on the table. In this case, the dark blue corresponding to 3,000 gallons an hour is under the 2-inch column. So you'll know you'll be needing to use 2-inch tubing for the most efficiency of your plumbing system. Now we can figure out the additional work the pump will have to do pushing the water through the tubing that you've chosen. In this case, we can put down the tubing length at A and then move to the equivalent length that the fittings add in friction. This is an interesting concept. We know that the friction in, in fittings is going to be additional to whatever the friction is in the length of tubing. So what we can do is convert the friction in the, each fitting into an equivalent length of tubing as if you had one longer length of tubing. The way we'll do that is by using the chart in section 2 at the bottom. Let's say we have a male-female adapter, a 90-degree elbow, and a swing check valve in our 2-inch system. Going to the chart, we'll see that a standard elbow adds 8.5 feet of equivalent length, a male-female adapter 4.5 feet for a total now of 13 additional feet of length, and a swing check valve another 19 feet for a total of 32 additional feet of length. That is, when we add our additional length of tubing to our original length of tubing, we'll get a combined total equivalent length of tubing that will represent the total friction in the system. If we have 25 feet of tubing plus 32 feet of equivalent length in fittings, our total system will be 57 feet of tubing. Once we know our equivalent tubing length, we can now find the total friction in the line. Going to our friction loss chart, we'll find that at 3,000 gallons an hour, our friction coefficient is 0.05. Multiplying 0.05 times our total equivalent length of tubing of 57 feet gives us our total additional head of friction in the line. That means the total head in the line will be about 2.5 to 3 feet. Let's round up to 3 feet of total additional head of friction in the line. Now we can take the height of the waterfall, let's say that's 4 feet, and add to it the height of the additional friction in the line at 3 feet for a total dynamic head of 7 feet. That number is critical for finding the right pump. Now that we know the total dynamic head, we can choose the right pump for our application. We want a pump that gives us the right flow at the right head height. Going to the chart and following the head height down until we find a pump that gives us the right flow We'll then look for a pump that returns that flow when it's in its best operating range, the dark blue cells on the chart. That'll ensure that we have the right pump giving us the right flow at the right head, and that pump will last a good long time. We hope you'll find our trifold useful in selecting the right pump for your application. We'll be going over this in much greater detail in a future episode of AWG TV, so uh, stay tuned and keep watching.